In today's video, we're back with some updated NHL trade rumors. Today, we're focusing on the Montreal Canadiens, the Vancouver Canucks, and the Philadelphia Flyers. We'll discuss all the latest coming up next. Welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. We review and discuss all 31 NHL teams, so if you're a huge hockey fan, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So we are less than two weeks away from the NHL draft and when free agency interview period opens shortly after that as well. So there's lots of exciting times coming up ahead for NHL hockey as we prepare here for the 2019 Stanley Cup Finals that come to an end. Of course, Game 7 coming up here shortly to finish the Stanley Cup Finals here and determine who this year's Stanley Cup champion is going to be. Very exciting time around the NHL. Now, as I mentioned, we got three teams we're covering today and I want to start here with the Philadelphia Flyers. Flyers GM Chuck Fletcher has made it known around the NHL that he is certainly open to trading the Philadelphia Flyers first overall selection, which he holds the number 11 pick right now. I would imagine if the pick is traded, it'll happen on draft day on the draft floor shortly before they're due to select. Um, obviously, they're going to take, take a look at what players are already selected ahead of them and obviously who's available and make that decision here. Probably near the last minute would be my guess. But he has made it known that if he is to trade the pick and he says there has been some interest and he expects interest in the pick to pick up here as we get closer to the draft, which is probably a fair statement here, that he wants somebody who can jump into their lineup and be an immediate help but he doesn't want a player who's older or somebody who's going to be a rental or a pending UFA. He's looking for somebody either with term on a contract that's reasonable or somebody who might be younger, uh, you know, possibly somebody who could either be a pending RFA or somebody who might be an upcoming RFA here soon. Either way, he wants a younger impact player that they can hopefully have in our organization for a fair bit of time here. Obviously, trading your first round pick is not something to take lightly, but the Flyers do have a ton of prospects uh, in a variety of areas within the forward group, even on D. Uh, so they certainly are in a position because the cupboards are well stocked that they could consider trading this pick for a player who can help now instead of somebody who can jump into their lineup here in a couple of years time. I do expect the Flyers to also continue to be busy as well. I mean, there is some talk that they may make some other moves, especially on their blue line. I uh, wouldn't be shocking to see Andrew McDonald be bought out, as I mentioned before. And it is still rumored that a defenseman like a Shane Gosses bear, for example, could possibly be traded. Uh, I know as he's been linked to a few different teams, including a team we're going to talk about here shortly, Montreal. Uh, I don't have any additional information on where he might be going or any other talks that are ongoing in regards to Gosses Bear, but I do expect the Flyers to be somewhat busy around the NHL draft here and possibly trade their first round pick as well as make some other moves. But of course, the right deals have to come together to make that happen. So there's no guarantee they, they make those deals, but it's certainly something that Chuck Fletcher wants to explore and I do expect them to be fairly busy. Of course, they're still waiting on a contract here with Kevin Hayes as we reported yesterday. Uh, Hayes is expected to be visiting with the Flyers this week to hopefully get a new contract ironed out uh, before their rights to him expire and he has an opportunity to speak to other teams here coming up in a couple of weeks time. Now on to the Vancouver Canucks. Now as we know GM Jim Benning has a lot of decisions to make this summer. They're trying to get Brock Besser signed which is a big contract that they need to get lined up. Uh, no, no news on that front here as of yet. There were reports indicating that they were a long ways apart in negotiations but the last update from Benning kind of squashed those ideas and said they were having good conversations and things were progressing. So I guess we'll see. They don't seem to be in a huge hurry to get that done. They want to make sure they get the right deal here in place for both sides. But in regards to defenseman Alex Edler, he's another big piece here pending UFA. Uh, they're trying to determine if he remains with the club or not. And that could certainly impact what other moves they make, especially with their blue line heading into next year. I mean, obviously they have a fairly young crop of blue liners and Alex Edler is a veteran guy who's been with the team for quite a number of years, can be a, a veteran leader back there and certainly mentor some of the younger guys. So he certainly is a good player that they would like to keep around, but only if it makes sense from a contract perspective here. Obviously, they're not going to overpay in regards to term or dollars to make it happen. They have a big youth movement going on here in Vancouver. They do want to win sooner than later as well. So at the same time, they need to balance that. But the other big factor here that's coming into play with a lot of contracts, not just Edler, but you'll hear more and more talk about this as we head into free agency, especially next year as well, but a lot this year, is the Seattle expansion draft coming up here as they prepare to enter the league in the 2021 season. So obviously, teams are going to have to have players exposed for expansion draft purposes. 
And they're going to want to protect a lot of certain players that they have in mind here, especially younger assets that are going to be eligible to be claimed should they not be protected. So they're trying to work out here a contract with Edler. Benning has made it known through an interview that the max term he seems to want to offer Edler is a two-year deal, which would make him a pending unrestricted free agent again right before uh, Seattle enters the league so that they would not have to protect him. Obviously, it appears as though Edler may not be too fond of that, and they're kind of going back and forth. So I don't know if they have a whole lot of problem when it comes to money. I think term is, seems to be more of the sticking point here. We don't really know what Edler's looking for, but I would assume that he would want more than two years, and it sounded like he was looking for the Canucks to not only give him the term, but be willing to protect him in the expansion draft by offering him a no-trade clause, which he did have previously, as we've seen with the Vegas Golden Knights expansion draft. Players who had no-move clauses or limited no-trades even had to uh, be protected in order to uh, to maintain those clauses. So a lot of teams are going to be a little bit more reluctant, I think, with newer contracts here, except for key players, which is really the way it should have been all along. I think at one point, GMs kind of got a, a little bit crazy with handing these out to players who, in my opinion, were not the top guys. Uh, they kind of handcuffed themselves to a lot of these contracts. A no-trade clause or a modified no-trade should only be given to I mean, a select few players, the top guys in the league who can have control and have, are huge parts of your team. And but many teams went a little crazy with these in the past here, in my opinion, and the Canucks being one of them. So we'll see here what happens with Alex Edler. But Benning's made it known that a two-year deal is, looks to be the max that he's willing to offer Edler which in my opinion increases the likelihood that he does depart via free agency. I think there's enough other teams that could use a guy like him that will probably pony up and give him more term here. Um, so I do think it's less likely now than before that Alex Edler returns to Vancouver unless he's willing to change what he's looking for here. Now next up, I want to talk about the Montreal Canadiens in an article that came out with TVA Sports talking about the possibility of the Habs trading center iceman Philip Deneau. Now they didn't indicate that Mark Bergevin was shopping Deneau. What it indicated was that the Habs were receiving a lot of interest and potential trade talk around this player. So there is no trade rumor suggesting that Bergevin is shopping him, but obviously a player like Deneau had a really solid year last year, uh, put up a good number of points. His points per game was, uh, you know, highest in his career, and he's certainly progressing nicely. He's got a reasonable contract. He's at a good age. So I can understand why a lot of teams would have interest. And I mean, Philip Deneau, probably is more important to the Montreal Canadiens than he would be on a lot of other teams. Uh, obviously, the Habs have worked hard at creating more depth at the center position over the last couple of years, uh, but they still have a lot of those players that are in that mix now that are younger and still developing and uh, not quite ready, I would think, to take on bigger roles, but slowly here are progressing. You know, obviously, Max Domi played a fair bit of center last year and did a pretty good job. Certainly had career highs and total points, uh, so obviously, they likely will continue to uh, have him play center, which will help uh, quite a bit here. They have youngsters like Hawk and Niemi. They've got a Ryan Paling who signed out of college near the end of last year and looked really good. They got Nick Suzuki coming up, who they got from Vegas in the patch ready deal. Of course, they have Deneau. Uh, they have uh, veteran Nate Thompson, who you know won't be there, I don't imagine, too long, but for another year or so can play center as well in the bottom six. So they don't have too bad of a group of players, but if they traded Deneau, they would certainly lose a lot of experience down the middle here. I mean, at times he's been their top one or two centers over the past few years, even before Domi played last year. Philip Deneau really was their top center a lot the year before. And even though I don't personally see him as a number one center, most teams would probably have him as a number three, at least a real solid cup contending teams. Um, you know, he's been hopped higher in the depth chart with Montreal because of their situation with that position. So he certainly had an opportunity to increase his point totals uh, and, you know, certainly make his contract look very valuable. So I'm not sure that the Habs are going to trade him, but if Bergevin receives an offer where he can improve other parts of the team, it would not be a complete surprise here. It also depends on what else Mark Bergevin is working on. Now, you never know when some of this information gets leaked out through the media. Uh, you don't know what the motivation is. Did that come from the Habs? Are they maybe looking to make other moves, bring in another center rice bin, which would increase the likelihood that they could trade to know? Hard to say. We don't know what all their plans are. They have been linked to having a lot of interest in free agent center rice bin, Matt Duchesne. I think it's probably fair to say Duchesne's definitely the top center rice bin, at least, in the free agent class in 2019 here. I know they. I can understand why they'd have interest. Uh, I can even see why he might have interest as well. So I'm not sure that they're going to be able to sign him, but I can certainly see them doing their best to do so. They have to explore it at least for sure. I um, mean, obviously, uh, that's the main way to add to this position right now for Montreal. I'm not sure that they have 
have a lot of assets that would make a good trading partner to bring in another top center. Uh, obviously, it looks as though Jonathan Duran's better suited for the wing if he's uh, hung on to as well. I mean, Duran's been another player that's been mentioned a lot in trade rumors, mostly near the end of their season after they uh, missed out on the playoffs back in April. Uh, there was more talk about Duran being traded then. It's been a little bit more quiet as of late, so we don't really know what's going on with that. The Habs might consider that. Then again, they might not because Mark Bergevin is likely going to have a harder time bringing back an asset to justify it based on the fact he gave up Sergachev uh, to trade Sergachev for Durant and then trade him when his value is lower and bring back a less valuable asset might not make sense. He might hang on to him for some time yet and see if he can be rejuvenated and get things going. Um, I know at times he was certainly a player that frustrated a lot of Habs fans last year. That talent that does appear to be there at times, uh, but it's a combination of effort level and just bringing that talent out with the right mix of players as well. So hard to say what goes on with Durant, but Philip Deneau apparently is generating a lot of interest. I know the main area of focus, I think, for the team would, would really to shore up that left side D. I mean, they do have some guys on the right side that are pretty solid, like Weber and Petrie. They signed Brett Kulak, who's a left shot defenseman, to a, a contract extension earlier this offseason. And that's a pretty decent signing. He did okay with them. Um, but of course, I don't think he's a top pair guy. He might be able to be a top four, maybe even a bottom pair guy at times. Obviously, they also have Jordy Ben, who's a pending UFA. So it's not really clear if he's going to return. Of course, they got Carl Alsner, who's really worked out to be pretty much a bust in Montreal. I'm sure they're going to explore trading him, maybe even consider a buyout. Uh, that would not be shocking. There is a fair bit of term left on his contract, though. So a buyout still might be a little bit too expensive for what they want to do. They might be able to find a trade, hopefully, and retain some salary if necessary. So that left side of the blue line certainly needs some help, especially like I've been saying for a number of weeks now since this offseason really kicked off. If I were the Habs, I'd really focus hard on finding a top pair defenseman who can really play with Shea Weber and be that top two guy type of guy, uh, like a Shane Goss is better, like for Philly, who I mentioned before, has been mentioned. I'm not sure if those teams are really going to hook up or not, but personally, I've always kind of linked to myself just based on what Philly's looking to do and based on what Montreal's looking to do. I think it would make sense, but... Of course, I can't say with any kind of certainty that that's going to happen. For today, Philip Deneau is generating a lot of interest. That much we can say, according to TVA Sports here, if the Montreal's presented with an offer where they can prove another area of their team, and maybe if they're hoping to go after a free agent like a Matt Duchesne, maybe there's more to the story that we don't know, and maybe the Habs are looking to upgrade the center and left shot defenseman position here by making some other moves that could be made at the draft or in the free agency. So let me know what your thoughts are on the possibility of the Habs trading Philip Deneau. Obviously, it's early. We don't know what teams would be involved. We don't know what the return would be. But uh, apparently, that is out there. That the Habs are getting a lot of calls. So let me know your thoughts on the possibility of them trading to know. And if they did go down that road, what do you think would be a fair return? So that is all your latest updates here for today. Stay tuned for the channel for more updates. There's more information coming out on a lot of teams on almost a daily basis here. Like I said, we're not far away from the draft and free agency. There's a lot of chatter around the NHL. Certainly could be an exciting time with lots of players potentially changing teams here. So stay tuned for more content coming soon. Thank you very much for watching everybody and I will catch you next time.